Cheers. Suck yeah. Cheers. Oh my god, I'm so excited you're here. This is by far already my favorite podcast interview ever. Oh yay! <laughs> That's why I do it. Exactly, it involves wine. I can swear. I just took a shot of. Can you read the bar? Can you read that bottle from here? Uh, noble oak, <laughs> noble oak, bourbon. Oh, so good, so good. Happy Tuesday, Nina. Happy Tuesday. How are you? I am good. Oh, I'm so glad now you're I'm here. Good. Now you're now you're good because you got wine. Yes. What are we drinking? <laughs> Joel got Sauvignon Blanc. It's mm. great. It's so warm outside. It's perfect. Yeah, it's like eighty something degrees. I know you're, you're in a tank top and I'm sweating hair with my long sleeves, even though they're, they're fluffy or floaty or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let me introduce you. Nina Jarnum from Nina Jarnum yoga. This is how I see you on Instagram. <laughs> Although it's, it's funny because sometimes I, I know the person first and then I see them on the social media, um, or vice versa. And so I always have this, like, um, I, before I just knew you as Nina because yeah. that's how you were introduced to me by Andrea, right? Uh-huh. That's how we met. Um, so I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so excited. It was a great introduction by Andrea Sundell. She was on our podcast. Um, I don't know if it's, maybe it's been several months by now. It seems like it's going really fast. Um, and she's adorable and I, I love, yeah, like she's one of my favorite people. I was just about to say, she's one of my people. And she talks right. about you the same way. Yeah. So she wanted to introduce us for a while. I think it was, you know, every time, we would talk about going for a drink, which that happens all the time, right? You see people you like, and you're like, oh, let's go have a drink. And then it never happens. Um, but she was always saying, like, the three of us should go. And then what happened? It was a few weeks ago, right? I showed up at one of her. It was cute. She was like, hey, I'm having drinks with some friends. And so I showed up, and I didn't know anybody. I got there before you did. And I walked away feeling like I was BFFs with everybody. <laughs> right? That was such a fun so night. It was a great night. It yes. was a great night. We were, where were we? Whisper Sisters. Whisper Sisters, yeah. Oh, that oh. place is beautiful. Got, so beautiful. They got such good cocktails. This is the problem. Their cocktails are so good. You can't, I can't <laughs> just have one. No. And then I walk out hammered yes. every time. Um, there hammered was this, and broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, because it's not cheap. <laughs> Um, I went there in the summertime. This was a story I actually told on a previous episode and I, the long and the short of it is I dined and dashed and I didn't mean to, I knew the bartender and he texted me and he's like, did you know that you just left and didn't pay the bill? (laughs) I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't know that. I think I I was a combination of hammered Uh and confused. Because I remember pulling my credit card out. Um, I went to the bathroom. I was with a girlfriend, came back, and then put my card back in my wallet. And I guess it never occurred to me that I didn't actually sign anything. That's awesome. I <laughs> felt hor- I felt like an idiot. Did you go back like, and pay, though? I, ca- I gave him my card number over the <gasps> phone because he was working. And Okay, that's fine. But now every time I go, that bartender, not, not him, but the, the woman who was waiting on us, she doesn't like me very much. <laughs> She, I don't know her name and I wouldn't call her out anyway, but I kind of don't blame her. Um, no, but then again, I mean, you came back and paid. I did pay. It wasn't, I didn't do it yeah, intentionally. Exactly. But, and if you that, didn't come back and pay, yes. That would be a problem. That would be a problem. Anyway, um, I, I have absolutely nothing to talk about and everything to talk about. I love that. So <laughs> that's how the best conversation let's, starts. Let's dive in. I was just before you showed up, I was watching one of your Asana hacks. Okay, wait. Asana. 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 That was the first thing that I recognized yes. in the video is that I say it incorrectly. <laughs> um, and I don't know why that is. I think it's because there's a um, there's a productivity um, app that people use for project management. Yeah. And everybody calls it Asana. So I guess that's... Yeah, anyway, they're full of shit. So that's, <laughs> yes, they're full of shit. Um, and so I... I'm not a huge yoga person. I've tried it many times and I do love it when I, when I get into it. Um, but what I loved about this video is you went really deep 
in like foot positioning and hip positioning and the reason why, and even a few, like you said, hacks where you're like, all right, well, technically you're supposed to have your heels aligned, but let's do this because nobody's got, you know, it was really great. And I think every time I've had a class in which a teacher will look at me and be like, okay, they'll come over and they'll try and like move my hips or move my this and move my that, which is great in a one-on-one setting in the sense that you have all the time in the world with that one student. Right. But as a teacher with a class of, you know, many in 10 or plus more people, I don't imagine you have the time to be able to do that with every position that you're trying to do. No, you, you do have to develop your verbal cues and also priorities. Like what, what are the most important things that you want to communicate to the students so they don't mess up their own bodies? Yeah. They're not going to look perfect. That's okay. You've got to let go of that. Um, yeah. So, and also know who to touch. I, so I actually have, I, I do this workshop for other teachers um, called Hands On Adjustments because a lot of teachers, they don't actually necessarily know when to touch a person and when not to touch, touch a person. And that takes a lot of experience. And it takes like, just you have to see the person. Right. You have to see them because sometimes a person can be completely out of alignment and look like, I don't know what. But if you touch them, you're going to injure them because they're not ready to even get into alignment at all. So I've had, I've had clients who are ex-NFL players. I mean, their bodies are so destroyed. If I tried to put them into alignment, I would mess break. them up. I would break <laughs> them. Yeah. So you have to oh. develop the the instinct for that. Right. And that's okay. And do you also have students who are just like, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Yes. Like, and I totally respect that. Personal space or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's not very often I get that, by the way. I mm-hmm. think I've had maybe one or two people in my life that have like, come up and say, I, I can't be touched. And I will absolutely respect that yeah. 100%. I rarely touch other teachers. Right. Because um, it's just a professional respect almost, yeah. that even though their practice might not be what I think is ideal, I also respect that they should have enough knowledge to understand their own bodies and what they need yeah. to do. So I think that's a professional respect to not go and do too many changes on another teacher. I like that you keep referring to do what feels good. I mean, to a certain degree, right? You're obviously yes. there. You want to you want to learn and you want to do it properly in order to get the most out of it. But I find um, I don't think I'm here now, but probably 10 years ago, if I'd have gone to a yoga class, I want, I want to do it perfectly in the sense that I want to look exactly like the teacher. And obviously there's a, a, there's a bit of me that's competitive as well. So I want to be like, I want to have the perfect pose. Right. But my body wasn't ready for it. Um, probably sometimes nor was my, my mind. Yes. (laughs) Um, so it's great to be able to say to a student, okay, we, yes, there are best practices here, but get in touch with yourself and tell me what feels good and what doesn't feel good. And so I, that. I, always um, teach my students that everything is an aim. There's no perfect pose, so stop striving for that. Instead, notice what your body is ready for today. And it's a main thing in yoga practice, I think, is, I mean, what we're working for, we're working to become more present, and that's more present in our minds, and it's more present in our bodies. And that means we stop all the presumptions about our own body, and we start listening. Because our body will tell us everything. Yeah. So if you're having, like, let's say, oh, you get so tired with your body because you have an irritated stomach, you have a sore throat, and you're just feeling weak. And most people just get annoyed and say, like, oh, God, what's going on? Yeah. But that's your body sending you very, very clear signals. That's your body saying, guess what? Your diet is not optimal right now. Right. Uh, Guess what? You might need to rest a little bit. And we have to stop and start listening because your body will tell you everything you need to know about your health. Really. Do you know, this is a great topic because I am 47. 
Some days, I, like today, I feel like I'm 57 because my back is all jacked up. Um, but generally speaking, it's been a recent awareness that I need to start listening inward and not only to my physical body, but to my emotions and, and even a little bit like what, you know, maybe I don't feel emotional, but I know I'm just, everybody's irritating the fuck out of me. And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> and so often I've just powered through it. That has been my mode all my life. Whatever's happening, power through it, get to the other side, do the thing, distract yourself or whatever. And I don't know if it's my age or I don't know if it's just that I'm, you know, I'm starting to learn how important it is that I need to be listening, but now I'm listening. And I have this pipe dream that I've had for years about the things that women, especially just because that's what I'm, you know, I can identify with and what I understand a little bit more. If we could, as a young woman, as a early teenager, even start understanding how important it is to get to know ourselves physically, emotionally, what are our likes and dislikes? What are our tendencies and, and somehow give young women tools to start tapping into that. Imagine like how much more together we, we would have been, or at least I would have been if I had these tools when I was, you know, 16, starting to be aware, like maybe when I'm 15, 16 years old, maybe when I'm in my twenties, I'm starting to put them into practice. And then I'd get to this age now and it would just be like, Oh, I totally know what's happening. Oh my God, now yes. I'm doing a shit ton of work trying to figure it all out in a short period of time. Cause I'm like, Oh crap. I, know, I only got 30 more years before I keel over. So it's like, <laughs> but I was going to make the most of it. So my instinct kind of tells me that it's also a little bit of a generational thing. I feel the coming generations, like the Zoomers and stuff, like they're going to be way smarter than us. They're going to be way ahead of us because... Wait, what's a Zoomer? That's like a Generation Z. So that's after the uh, millennials. So that's like my kids. Okay. Are Zoomers. Yeah. And your kids are how old? Uh, I have a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old. Okay. So I have a five and a 15, 14. Exactly. That's so, Zoomers. Okay. Zoomers. Zoomers. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. There you go. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Okay, sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. Yeah. Like, oh, sumo. <laughs> no, anyway, I um, think that us and previous generations, uh, we we find it difficult, certainly at a younger age, to say out loud what we want and what we need. And when I say out loud, I don't just mean actually saying out loud, but also saying out loud to ourselves, mm -hmm. like recognizing this is what I need, this is what I want, and this is definitely what I do not want. I feel yeah. there's like a generational gap, but we were just told to, um, I don't know, um, suck it up. Yeah. I was just going to use those exact like, words. Suck it, <laughs> suck it up. Yeah. yeah. Like, and you that, know, it was the typical, like, I'm going to give you something to cry about. Exactly. <laughs> and that maybe our needs were not that important. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. I feel like that's probably how my, yeah. I felt with my parents. Because I certainly feel as I'm getting older, I'm, 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 I'm like you, I'm, I'm like establishing boundaries now mm -hmm. i have always been really shitty at setting my own personal boundaries yeah um not so much in like general life and i mean if if you know me i'm pretty salty and i'm pretty like like i don't know um strong and That's loud what I love most about you <laughs> yeah so i'm like i'm loud i'm strong I, I say what i mean but when it comes to especially people close to me I have, and that's just kind of realizing that now, been really shitty at setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a new thing for me that I'm going through at the moment where it's like, oh, wow, I actually need to set boundaries. And it's really difficult for me because I feel like an asshole Yeah, when I do. Totally. Because I've never really done it. I've always tried to make the people I love around me happy. Yes. Me too. So, you know, somebody just, I, I'm, I'm diving into like astrology. 
on a kind of a subsurface level, I'm not, I don't want to be an astrologer. I was just like playing with tarot cards this week and it's been so much fun. Nice. 